Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us um, today for the webinar Least Accounting um, with, your co with your host Catherine. My name is Lana and I'll be facilitating today. We will be recording this session um, and everyone will be remained on mute. We'll be sending out this recording early next week for you to view. If you have any questions, please just type them into the questions or chat box window and we'll answer those near the end of the presentation. We also invite you to join us next week for our Q&A Cafe session on insight to action and navigation targets. Uh, you can find the registration information about this on our resources page on our website or in the email that we send out next week. I will now hand it over to Catherine. All right. Fun stuff. Lease accounting. As, as a CPA and an accountant in my former life, uh, this is yeah, something we uh, as accountants have to play with a lot and especially with the rules changing. So um, for today I'm going to go through the scoping changes uh, that have to be done as well as uh, some of the concerns that that we've run into with various uh, other tenants and, and specific clients. Um, we'll go through the some of the account determinations and the GL account assignments for that, uh, for the, the lease accounting. And then we'll go through actually creating a, a lease contract as well as processing it and showing you the GL postings that it does, as well as the uh, supplier invoice posting for those particular, uh, for those lease contracts. So a lot to cover. So, all right. So oh, let's see. Down. Oh, my, there we go. All right. So, like I said, we'll go through the configuration, the setup of a lease contract, and then the execution. Okay. So, in scoping, in the project scope, uh, assuming your implementation project is still open, you can get to this. Uh, and if it's not, if you're looking at a change project. Um, so under the general ledger, general ledger, there's actually a question that says, do you want to enable the lease accounting for lessees? So that is the first step. Uh, in order to finish this um, step or to finish the scoping and get the update, uh, especially for, for, uh, companies that have been using by design for some time and especially if any of your fixed asset classes have been deleted or removed they will have to be restored uh, also there are going to be certain 5000 series account uh, sorry fixed asset classes that must have no assets assigned because now they're going to become the right of use asset classes. So those, there may be some maintenance that needs to be done to your assets, making sure that they are not assigned to 5,000, 5,100, Cannot be assigned to those asset classes because those asset classes are about to be repurposed. So. So, and that's the biggest part of the scoping is making sure that you can finish it out and get it, get it and activated. So, with the lease, uh, lease contract accounting, there's going to be lots of new possibilities for GL accounts to be utilized. First off, first on the list, the right of use assets. So. Do you want them to be in your current fixed asset GL accounts or do you want them in their own? Because now you're going to have its own fixed asset class, so therefore it can have its own fixed asset uh, account determination group. So do you want those, those assets in your existing GL accounts for fixed assets? The lease liabilities. So now we have a way to break apart based on um, the, the account determination for these assets, breaking apart the, the long, the, essentially the long-term 
lease liability. Uh, you've got the possibility of a depreciation expense that would be different from your standard assets. And the other ones that you may or may not see, the interest, the service expense, any revaluation. Uh, and these are all similar to what you would see on a fixed asset uh, account determination group anyway in those account determinations. But now these are going to be specific to the right of use assets. Uh, and then we've got the clearing. Uh, this is a clearing liability account, and this is going to be a general account, uh, a, a general um, meaning that it's for all of the lease liabilities. Uh, what's going to be that intermediate account as it comes from the long-term liability and going to payables? Okay, so then I'll show you what I what I mean with that in just a few minutes. Um, and so as you potentially create new GL accounts, don't forget to update your financial reporting structures to include any of, the, any of these new GL accounts. All right, so I've uh, got a couple of little screenshots here just to see. Um, so for the right of use assets, there's going to be configuring the um, account determination groups under the groups for fixed assets. If you play in the account determination groups, these, um, <laughs> these should look familiar. Uh, so we've got our the groups for fixed assets. And when as soon as you scope in the uh, lease accounting, then the 60, 40, 60, 50, and 60, 60 uh, become available. And uh, also on the other liabilities, that's where you're going to be creating one for those long-term assets. Uh, sorry, long-term liabilities. Okay. Uh, right. Um, when we get into uh, into the account determinations, so not only do you need to make sure that you've updated for the fixed assets and assigning the GL accounts for historical cost, accumulated depreciation, depreciation expense, then you're also going to need to, under the general ledger subledger, update the lease liabilities. So based on um, the lease liability account determination so that you could have one that say uh, the liability for leased vehicles versus leased buildings versus leased equipment. So in this case, you're seeing these, we've got three different account determination groups, but they're all going to the, and they're all going to the same lease liability. And this is generally going to be, you know, whatever you classified as your long-term lease liability. You can have it in separate GL accounts or you can have it all in one. Now, in this screenshot, um, the clearing lease contracts, it is blank and should be filled in because that is going to be, as you process the lease, uh, as you, you're going through through time, and now it's time for you to make a payment on that lease, or at least for the end of the period, making an adjustment to move it from your long-term lease liability to some sort of a current liability. That is the GL account that will go in the clearing lease contracts. Okay, in that field right there in the, in the middle. Okay, so that will take care of the accounting part of the setup. So now let's go look at this in a, in a test tenant. Okay, so the new 
uh, work center is called lease contract management and let me see if I can move this up make it a little easier to find <laughs> lease contract management and so here we're going to have the lease contracts that's going to be where we're actually creating a new contract or viewing the list that we already have the lease posting run is what will actually post to the general ledger for the liabilities and the assets that are being created by the lease contract. And in a few minutes, we will get to under supplier invoicing, and there's going to be the option for the lease contract invoice runs so that it will actually create a uh, potentially create a supplier invoice for the payment that you would have against that lease. All right, back down here. So we have in our list of uh, lease contracts, we have a couple that we have been playing with, but let's, um, and we'll go ahead and look at these, I guess it's good. There's going to be lots of lots of fields to look at and um, try to give you some information on what what's going to be necessary for these fields. So when we're creating a new a new lease contract, of course we're going to have the lessor. Who are who's our supplier? Who are we getting it from? Um, and of course, these are all going to fill in for you. <laughs> uh, your external reference ID is usually going to be your um, some identifier for your contract. I will say be prepared that this actually becomes your invoice number if you're actually doing a supplier invoice for this lease contract. Uh, it uses that external reference uh, as your external reference on the supplier invoice. All right, well, actually, let me do this. Let's close out of here and come back and do a brand new lease contract so we can see which fields need to be uh, done. Okay, so again, you can put any sort of description here and this would be your lease ID uh, number. Currency, is whatever your, uh, your currency uh, of choice is. <laughs> All right, inception date is gonna be the date um, of the start of the commitment. So it's an optional field. Um, so it's just for informational purposes, but the start date is not this is at the actual commencement date of the contract so this is going to essentially be uh your if there is an asset associated here this is going to be your acquisition date this is going to be your start date so for instance i'm going to start this back a couple of months now here we can say our Oh, excuse me. Uh, we can give a duration of the contract in months, or it will, or this will be calculated automatically if we enter a first end date, as you know, first uh, if there's a fixed term end date. Um, so this can one of these need one of these two fields needs to be uh, generally is is entered. And the other is calculated. So if I say I'm going to do this for 36 months, it will calculate. Uh, if I delete this and say, uh, say this is going to be till June 30th, 2023. Oh, I, sorry, it's already calculated my term date by me adding this in. But you can do either one and get that, um, have them both calculated. Um, so the unlimited 
indicator is just going to be that there's no end date agreed in the contract so it's going to be necessary to give notice to end it so we'll uh, that will have an impact on the the options and the notice all right so oh uh invoice offset days i thought this one was quite interesting so this determines the number of days um that it, before a payment schedule line that this should become relevant for the automatic invoicing so if let's say the payment for this you know, this particular lease payment is due on the last day of the month maybe you set this for 10 days so that it creates it for the 20th based based on a date of the 20th for um, uh, for that invoice to be paid or to be processed excuse me so when we go through the the invoice run okay so just for giggles all right and this is if you actually have some sort of an interest rate uh, on a particular lease contract so the options show you this is for renewals and notices that you may need to set up for uh, for this contract as far as uh, how often would you renew? Would it be automatic? Would someone have to actually come in and uh, do something, actually do something to this to, to make it continue? Uh, and this would be adding your notices of what's, what needs, who needs to be reminded that this is uh, due or not. Okay, now we're getting into the least objects. So uh, you could potentially have more than one object, of course, on a lease contract. Sometimes uh, you may have uh, multiple pieces of equipment or something on the same contract. So uh, this being uh, uh, it, you know, our, our demo tenant uh, has multiple sets of books. Uh, so this is following different valuations uh, lease valuations but in this case we have them both set for finance leases um, it is possible to set up in the configuration for operating leases as well so just that, that's something you can be aware of to maybe take care of some of the some of the accounting for an operating lease um, so let's say what do you want to say? We'll say this is the equipment. Uh, we'll call it a forklift, just for giggles. Uh, and whatever the external reference is. So, lease and lift. Lift one. All right. So, these are also things you can. Uh, define so if you have maybe slightly different rules or account determinations for different object types those are things we can also uh, map within the configuration so some of these may be easier to to keep the list fairly small or what you might use so just be aware of that so we'll say this is a equipment type um, here so uh, all right our automatic invoicing this one's nice mark this field to automatically generate the supplier invoices based on the payment schedule lines so we're going to come back to that so in our conditions okay our condition type let's go to the first one um generally you're going to be looking at the initial cost or if it's like a, a lease uh installments what are your le what are uh, those amounts um 
And I had a lease contract in front of me just a little while ago, and now I can't find it. So I was trying to find something to actually follow from. <laughs> so, so let's say um, if this were just, uh, I'll say an initial cost, what are you paying up front? What is, what is your initial cost to start this lease or is there one? Um, and so then you can set your tax code here. So let's say if you had to pay $1,500 up front, um, and then we're gonna add in our lease installments. Notice the valid to, valid from date here. So if we said this was a $645 per month, and we're gonna say this has to be at the beginning. Um, we can say this is uh, a monthly, and it's every one month on, and this would be, so I'm saying I'm doing this every, in, rather than every say three months, which would be quarterly. And what day of the month is it going to be due? Um, if we said like the 15th, that means it would start on the 15th of June. Okay, and I'm gonna add another row and say I'm going to have a lease installment of after one year, it's gonna to go to 675. So now I can say this is going to go, this is going, oh, sorry, oh, one. 2021. So now I can say this is going to be my every one month and on the 15th. Okay. Uh, this would also include if you had other things that you knew there was going to be some sort of, uh, and this is all back to reading the contract, uh, is there an exercise price for you know when it when the contract is done um what's going to be the residual value because that starts to calculate into your salvage value essentially your salvage value on the asset um, what other things are are pertinent to the contract to that lease contract all right so i'm gonna leave these at this point and if there's any questions of course anybody can let me know or let us know all right and down in the details would be if you actually do have to include any sort of tax uh with that particular lease payment or not whether it's uh whether it is actually taxable okay our organizational assignments so Here's going to be just like with any fixed asset, you generally have to assign that depreciation to either a, a, a project or a cost center. So that's one of the places this is going. So uh, as part of the asset, what, what cost center should this go to? So we'll go manufacturing. All right, and you can add notes here on the line items because remember that you can do this for multiple uh, multiple line items for this particular contract okay and i'm going to set this up for automatic invoicing so that it will automatically create the supplier invoice uh, with this with the runs it's not completely automatic you do at least have to get the runs um, processed all right and then different versions once you've actually released it you can do different versions of this particular lease contract all right and of course the changes notes attachments at the header level um, all right i'm gonna do a check um uh, tax code is missing. Oh, so it's gonna make me put in that tax that it has no tax. Okay. 
I don't think we added anything. All right. So we're going to say this is, we're going to say this one's non-taxable. This one's going to be non-taxable, just taking sales tax out of this makes life a little easier. And non-taxable. Save. And check, and we're good. Okay. All right. So now I can evaluate this. So now I can, excuse me, evaluate my uh, my lease contract. There we go, and it's going to think about it. Okay, so now it is ready for release, and we can release it. Um, if you needed to cancel the valuation, then you can, or if you needed to make changes to this, you could cancel the valuation, and uh, it would allow you to come back in make changes into the data on this lease contract. Okay, so I'm going to release it. All right, now you see you have, you can create the new version and we get this lovely payment schedule. So to me, it reminded me of a recurring invoice or something. So it shows you just what is expected to be paid in our case, per month uh, for those uh, for each invoice for this this lease contract. Okay. All right. So now, if I review this, I now have number four uh, here. So the next thing is, as of right now, there's um, it's just a contract. It's not, uh, we have to actually do the posting run. So under the lease contract management, under the periodic tasks, you have the lease posting run. And so I'm going to do a new one. So lease test, we're gonna do this for our company. Can do it for all sets of books and we will do it. This is going to be the date that it posts. So selecting a date, um, whether it's going to be at the beginning of the period or the end of the period for posting the GL, you know, posting to the general ledger for the lease contract. All right. So um I'm just going to say the first day of the current period. Uh, and just because um, normally you just include all of them, uh, but I'm just going to do it for number four, just because I know that one's waiting. All right. I'm going to set it to active. Always verify the start immediately. All right, now we'll give it just, just a minute. Because the runs always, you know, happen quickly. No questions thus far, Lana? No questions yet. Perfectly easy, no big deal. I don't know why the IASB and FASB are having so much trouble with this. So. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go look at our set of books. And we have one posting for this. And so here, oops, sorry. 
you can see so because we're in September and I started this contract as of June so here's going to be based on all my account determination groups here's where it's uh, recording the the value of the the least con of the least asset um, and putting that into into a GL account for fixed assets um, then the, here's the other side of it the 20 uh, 23940 for the long term liabilities again based on whatever GL accounts we chose for this for the the least liability of that particular account determination group and then because we had three months of the lease payments lease installments it's moved those from the long-term liability to I happen to have assigned uh, other current liabilities as that clearing uh, lease liability account so it's moved that that amount and this is all it's done at this point is moved it from the long term to the current um, uh, to the current liability account so okay uh, as you can see this part with the liability value versus the the lease uh, right of use asset excuse me and uh, let's see other things you can check there's our clearing so where we're clearing it out from the lease liability to the because of the installment uh, and this will actually fill in when you're actually when you close out when you close out the contract and you're doing this monthly um, lease processing run and so this would be something to make sure that you would add into your uh, if you weren't running this every time you added a new uh, a new lease contract uh, at the very least it needs to be run as part of your month end closing okay so wow. we have a quick question here Catherine mm -hmm. yes um, how would you handle when let's say you're leasing a vehicle but another dealership buys you out um, you turn in your leased vehicle early to get another vehicle do you cancel and close out to contract yes because you now have a new one Perfect. so, so yes you would have to uh, so let's say for instance you come here and you are going to uh, I got to remember where it is now <laughs> uh, oh and we didn't do these um, yes you'd have to terminate that con end that contract early and create a new one because technically now you've you've potentially either got a new vendor or at the very least you've got a new asset who's going to be valued differently um, so we'll have to it we may if we get a few more minutes I'll try to uh, I have to remember where all the, the stuff is to end the contract um, so we can We'll go through that in just a just a bit so okay all right so we did our new lease contract we did a lease posting run uh, so now we're going to go up here to the supplier invoicing because at this point while the value of that lease installment is sitting in other current assets it is not listed as a payable to make sure that you could actually pay that bill that it would show up on your payment run so I'm going to go to my lease contract invoice run this again would be something to schedule 
um, on a regular basis. Uh, so you can set, we have different things you can use to, to review and, and determine which, which lease contracts that you'd want to post. Um, so, you know, usually if you've got one that's going to be for your, for an office space or something like that, you want to make sure that this is paid ahead of time because generally the landlord wants, wants money on the first. Um, so making sure that these get done uh, in the appropriate amount of time and, and you can set these for uh, a specific lease contract or even just if you wanted to run these you know, for, if you have multiple companies, just doing one or the other. So in this case, I'm gonna do this just for my, uh, my one that we've been dealing with. Here's the option to go ahead and post the invoice versus just have it show up in the documents to be processed. So, um, I'm gonna set this to active and close. Up, save and close. And in just a minute, it will tell me that it's created. Maybe. It's never as fast as you want it to be. Sometimes it'll go ahead and just show me before the that runs. Nope, it hasn't posted yet. So let's see. Own oh, sweet time. So <laughs> Okay, well, all right, let's see. What else have we got? Um, so we'll come back to we'll come back to this in just a second. I'm hoping we can come back down here. Yeah, lease contracts. So uh I do. I did kind of like this. Like I showed you the the payment schedule within the uh, within the contract, um, and and the cash flows are nice depending on if you want to see how they get scheduled. Um, all right. Uh, you can create a new, like I said, create a new version. And if we said fine, this one goes into effect October first. And now we can get into our various versions. So version one ended, well, end September 30th. And now we can uh, <laughs> uh, allows us to change, change the end date. Um, but it's just gonna keep the same thing. So I, I had one that changed. Ah, the joys of other tenants. <laughs> oh, by the way, I forgot about this too, to show you this part, the right of use asset. So the asset actually gets, gets created. Um, based on the, uh, the lease account type or the lease object type. Uh, that's how it determines um, 
all the settings for the fixed assets and of course the cost center that I chose in the organizational assignment line of the, the lease item. Um, and always nice to see this one. So and it was going for three years because that's how long uh, we were we had it for and here's your depreciation schedule for that asset. Okay. Let's go check and check this. Still no. That's weird. Not sure why this is taking so long. Should be giving me a couple of a couple of invoices. <laughs> Any other questions, Lana? Is we still raise clear as mud? <laughs> <laughs> no more questions right now. I think everything. Okay. <laughs> now we're just waiting on the system. I think we, if, if you've been on here, you've seen it before. So, um, okay. All right. So earlier today, I was playing with this one. This was a another. Uh, since my run is not going to cooperate with me. Um, this was actually off uh, lease contract number three. They had um, the lease, lease contract number three had a uh, an option uh, or the sorry the lease the lease installment of eight hundred dollars per month. Um, so, so when we did this one, it's also, of course, set up for automatic invoicing. So that one posted, oh, oh, sorry, one more thing. I get in a hurry. I'm sorry. Um, this one, of course, posted that, op, um, that $800 to the same GL accounts that we saw on lease contract number four so it posted everything to the long-term liability for the full amount of the liability and then as you come to the correct period it was it moved the amount to um, other current assets or, sorry other current liabilities wow it's not even two o'clock for me yet um So we go to the supplier invoicing. And so this one actually did, ah, there it is, finally posted. <laughs> All right, so this is the one from earlier today that we had, uh, that I had posted. Uh, so there was the $800 lease installment the, with the external reference ID from uh, from the lease contract. And under the document flow. So you can see this one's just going to be, it's going from uh, the other current liabilities GL account to AP. So now that it, it clears out the, the value that's sitting in the, in the other current liabilities actually puts it into AP. So we'll look at this one that finally posted that caught up on all the months. So uh, so we've got you know June, July, August, and September catching up on this one invoice. Uh, I, it brings over, of course, the description from the item 
I think it's interesting that it always does because it knows it's per month. So it's always a one month at however much the, uh, the value was for that. Okay. And again, so in the document flow, the full value just cleared out the other current liabilities from the, from the amount of the posting run. Okay. And so now this is ready to pay. So, all right. So really, um, I think if you can, if you have the information for your particular contract, uh, filling in the details, uh, it seems to follow a lot of, depending on how organized your contract is, uh, a lot of the same, same fields you're going to be looking at and same data you're going to be looking at on, a, on that lease contract. Um, the biggest thing is going to be setting up those account determinations ahead of time and your account, uh, sorry, fixed asset classes and making sure that those are uh, set up the way you need them to be and, and going to, like I said, going to the correct GL accounts that you want to see them going to. The next thing is the liabilities. Um, I will say we tied them to, um, to a long-term liability. Um, I wish that we could separate, you know, have some rules for current year versus, you know, or the next 12 months versus, uh, versus say a long-term, but we don't have a way to break those apart at this point. So SAP didn't go into that kind of detail like you would um, maybe with a um, a reclassification like you can do on AP and AR but we don't have that at this point so if it is a long-term lease um, it's going to go into whatever GL account you put it into you know that you assign it's it's not going to reclass it when it comes to the what's actually due in the next current, you know, in the next 12 months. So, okay. Any other questions, Lana, or are we? No, I think that's it. Just to let everyone know, um, we'll be sending out the recording early next week, so you can keep your eye out for that, as well as the sign up link for the webinar next week. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So thanks everyone for coming and we will okay. see you later. Okay, bye.